there's a lot brewing in Golden State that I think a lot of us aren't paying attention to, or maybe we just aren't realizing it. Young star talent, veteran superstar power, and... Chris Paul is one of the first people to ever reach out to Steph Curry when he came into the league. Can you tell me about that? Wife was at his wedding. Uh, I think him and his wife was at our wedding. But uh, we 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 known each other for a very very long time, man. So I'm excited to get a chance to play alongside him, Clay, Wig, Draymond, all them, man. They they got a unbelievable organization and that team is just they've been playing together for a while and they know what they're doing steph had uh cp below the break he hit him with a couple moves and, and got a amazing and one he said this ain't 2014 no more a ton of interesting storylines in between on june 22nd the warriors took the plunge and traded the 23 year old emerging jordan pole to the wizards in exchange for chris paul a move that sent shockwaves throughout the NBA because of how unexpected the move was. But I've got to say, the closer I look at it, the more I'm liking what we're getting ready to see from these Warriors in 2023. But on another note, the Warriors got a huge monkey up off their backs by getting rid of Jordan Poole, knowing his awkward relationship with Draymond Green. And I think it's going to prove as a move that will really take them over the hump. See, this past season was supposed to be a passionate title defense for the Dubs. Speak about uh, all of the slippage that we had as a team on the road, not being able to come together. Instead, the season became mostly about Draymond versus Poole and if they could coexist while the Warriors would go and hunt for a fifth title. But by Draymond's own admission, the Warriors season was effectively a lost cause because of the punch. Draymond said publicly, we're not playing right now because when you speak about the fouling, when you speak about all the slippage that we had as a team on the road, not being able to come together, none of those things happens if that punch before the season doesn't happen. And so clearly the Warriors felt the same way because they went ahead and traded Poole to the Wizards to clean things up internally and to get up off that massive contract they paid him just a summer ago. Which is funny, I say that because the Warriors just traded for Chris Paul, who Draymond hasn't ever been a fan of. I don't like CP at all. Like, we don't have a good relationship at all. Going as far as we don't have a good relationship at all really makes it feel like the Warriors didn't change much at all with trading Poole and adding CP3. But in fairness, these were Draymond's comments about CP3 a couple years back, so things might be different now. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But seeing how Draymond did openly acknowledge CP3's feel for the game and how he called him one of the smartest hoopers ever, I think there's that good possibility that Draymond and CP3 will come around with each other and play off each other in a way that's gonna skyrocket the Warriors to an even better level next season. And if they find a way to do that, Man, oh man, that's going to be a scary sight for the rest of the NBA because of how much versatility this team is going to bring offensively. There was one thing last season, one huge thing the Warriors were missing that they've likely added again in Chris Paul. It's someone that will allow Steph to play freely and someone who will certainly take a ton of load off of Steph's shoulders. The Warriors this past season led the NBA in assists as a team with over 2,400 assists. That's even more than when they led in assists as a team during during the record-breaking 73-win season. Yet, every time I looked up this past season, the Warriors looked more and more like a one-man Steph Curry show. And I, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. When is the last time you saw Steph Curry carry such a load offensively the way he did in the postseason? Particularly against the Lakers, he nearly doubled the shot attempts of his next closest teammate. The Warriors have Steph Curry, who is still the most lethal offensive weapon in the NBA. I strongly believe that if Steph just had had the depth on his team that he's used to having, it would have been enough for him to conserve just that bit of extra energy each game to go beat the Lakers in the second round of the playoffs. Chris Paul, even though he was hurt through much of the second round versus the Denver Nuggets, still posted a ridiculous 52 assists to only seven turnovers. So imagine if Steph had a guy so cerebral and so efficient with the ball in his hands to do some of the lifting in the postseason for the Warriors. And I don't mean to trash the rest of the Warriors or Jordan Poole, but especially Poole. He'd often become a liability for Golden State because he turned the ball over so much. Then Steve Kerr would quickly snatch him from the game. The Warriors would then lose that extra scoring burst that Poole provided. And in turn, Steph would play until fatigued and the Warriors became a one-dimensional team. 
The numbers tell the story a bit better than I do. The Suns were five games below 500 without Chris Paul in 2022, just two years later, looking like one of the most lethal teams ever. Phoenix had the best clutch offensive rating in the league at 136.6 in 2022, which was around eight points better than second place LA Clippers. What about defensively? Well, Phoenix had the best clutch defensive rating in the league at 90.1 in 2022. The Warriors and the Wizards somehow were the only other teams with the clutch defensive ratings below 99 last year. And up until the All-Star break last season, the Suns were an incredible 23-3 in games separated by less than five points with five or few minutes left in the ball game. So if anyone ever asks me, and you, if Chris Paul's presence truly matters even at this stage and age of his career, the last couple years is that Chris Paul has shown us that he can actually play off the ball and be a capable knockdown three-point shooter. To put it short and sweet, yes, because he brings a few things to the table that very few guys in the NBA offer. And now, with the addition of Chris Paul and the subtraction of Jordan Poole, I am more convinced than ever before that the Warriors are getting ready to place a massive contract at Draymond's doorstep. With Steph and CP3 initiating the offense, Draymond's role is going to be as defined as ever as a defense anchor. And with Draymond almost certainly coming back and the Warriors almost certainly not being near as atrocious on the road as they were last year. <laughs> I mean, the key will definitely be for the Warriors to get back to their original blueprint of ball movement and defined roles for each guy on the team. They were once the NBA's most fundamentally perfect team because of how well-rounded they were. And believe it or not, all these years later, the Warriors can get back to that level because they're going to feature one of the most unorthodox yet powerful cores in all of the NBA. For starters, it's that connection Draymond has had with the greatest shooters in tandem we've ever seen in Steph and Clay. It isn't just the fact that these three have formed one of the winningest big threes in NBA history. And it isn't just the fact that these three have formed one of the greatest brotherhoods in all of sports. It's the fact that Draymond Green has as good of chemistry as any one man has with another teammate in the entire league. My Warriors fans know what I'm talking about. Even in a blowout game, Draymond between his legs. <laughs> Curry's got 41 on the niftiest assist of the is Draymond's feel for where exactly Steph and Clay want the ball for a wide open shot. It's Draymond knowing where to get Steph the ball on a fast break, how Steph likes to run the pick and roll, and so many more of those small bits that Steph or the Warriors offense wouldn't be able to replicate in the absence of Draymond. And then you give the Warriors Chris Paul, who is still the best true point guard in the world, I'd be stunned if the Warriors don't run away with the most assists and three-pointers made in the NBA in 2024. And on top of that, provided everyone stays healthy, down the stretch of ball games, the Warriors are going to have the two of the most lethal shooters ever in Steph and Clay running off picks to get open looks at threes, with two gifted passers in Draymond and CB3 getting them the ball in their spots. Most roster shakeups are a chemistry experiment. But whether Chris Paul starts or not, it doesn't really matter because his game will fit in perfectly with guys like Steph and Clay, who plays so well moving off the ball, and Steph is naturally at his best for longer spurts when he doesn't have to do as much lifting on offense, bringing the ball up the court every single possession. There's no chemistry experiment to be had for the Warriors, and that's an amazing thing for this team. In Steph's initial public comments on the Chris Paul trade, he said, Every team that CP's been on, you know, they've gotten better. Um, and I think that's the most consistent thing about him and who he is and what he brings to the team. And everybody's going to talk about the age and all that type of stuff. So it's on us to, to put it all together and figure out how the pieces work. Whichever team Chris has been on has gotten better, which uh, is certainly true, seeing how he took Oklahoma City to the playoffs without any star on his team in 2020. I mean, how CB transformed the Suns from a laughing stock to contenders in just a couple of seasons, and so much more. I mean, now pair that with the dynamic culture and the championship pedigree of the Warriors. So I think it's safe to say that no team is ready to see these Warriors in 2024 because they just got a whole lot scarier.